Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on Arenas Plot. So this video kind of leads on from the um, video that we did, look, well video that I've done, looking at the Arenas equation and um, it basically goes through how you can use it, how you calculate it and the reasons behind the simplified forms etc. So if you don't know much about the Arenas equation and you really want to kind of know a kind of intro to it, then I suggest you look at that video first before this one. So if you just click on the link below, you can have a look at that video there. Um, this video, I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about Arenas equation already and what he did and all this stuff. And we're basically just going to use the equation and apply it to a what we call an Arenas plot. Um, I'm going to show you some um, more calculations kind of leading to this and this could really kind of rack up some marks so um, Right, I suppose the first thing is very very briefly just to look at the Arenas equation and basically he came up with this idea where um, he would Basically make a link between rate constant which is K and vary that and how it varies with temperature and activation energy that was basically what, what he tried to do and he came up with this equation and this is his equation so k equals ae minus ea over rt now effectively that just means k is the uh, rate constant a is the arenas constant and this is uh, put against an exponential which is a little e button which i'll show you in a minute on the calculator to the minus activation energy, R is just your uh, gas constant um, and T is your temperature. So this is the equation we're going to use, but we can simplify it into this form here. Uh, by if we take logs, natural logs of both sides, uh, we get a more simplified version of the equation. And this is the one that we're going to be using rather than um, this one mainly to uh, work out your graphs. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and look at the components of the graph and see how it fits in with the equation. Because I think if you if you understand kind of how the equation links with the graph, it becomes a little bit easier, hopefully. Um, so here's a graph, we've sketched it out here. You can see on the y-axis, we've got the natural log of k, so this is our rate constant, uh, and this is plotted against uh, one over t, um, which is just like rate. So, um, and what I've done is we always get a straight line graph when we do these as well. And because we've got a straight line graph, we actually get um, this. Well, we can use the straight line formula. So any of you who are pretty good at maths or even if you did GCSE maths, should I say, um, you would have seen this formula. And this is the formula for a straight line. So Y equals MX plus C. And just a little reminder from GCSE, Y is the Y axis, which is this one here. M is the gradient. Yeah, they call it M, but hey ho. X is uh, 1 over T, and C is the intercept. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is going to link this in with this um, simplified version of the equation. So you can see here, Y is ln K. So this on the Y axis is ln K. The M bit is the gradient. Now, if you're looking on here, we know what X is. X is 1 over T. So effectively, that's like the T and the 1 on the top there. So the M bit must be minus EA over R. Okay, and that's going to be pretty important because we're going to use that quite a bit. So this bit, the gradient, this bit here, is minus EA over R. Okay, that's really important because we're going to be using that quite a bit later on. Uh, and uh, the intercept is um, plus LNA. Okay, so that's the intercept. But we're going to, we're going to, don't worry too much about that, but we're actually going to uh, calculate that. Um, a little bit later on as well. Okay, so okay, th this is where it kind of fits in. We're now going to use an example, okay, and we're going to use some very specific um, data here to try and calculate activation energy and A as well, which is our um, Arenas constant. So um, let's look at this data here. We've got this is LNK, this bit here just on the side. So uh, this you can see is in the negative numbers, so that's why the graph's kind of a little bit like upside down. Uh, and then going across here, we have 1 over t. Uh, and 1 over t is, in this case, is times 10 to the minus 3. So if we take any of these numbers here and we put times 10 to the minus 3 at the end of it, then that should, um, that should make it work. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we're given this information. We've got a line. We've plotted our line. You get this from um, practicals. So you do a practical experiment and then you, you obviously vary the temperature um, of your experiment and you plot your points on a line like this. And so what we do is we um, plot our points and we take the gradient. So the first thing we need to do is get the gradient. And remember the gradient was minus EA over R. 
okay? So just for ease, obviously there's no graph paper on here, but you would have graph paper, you just do a standard gradient. So your gradient is always the change in the um, uh, vertical part or y, change in y, divided by the change in x, which is that number there. So I put them on here, so this is minus 1.1, and 0 0.1 times by 10 to the minus three. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's do it in, um, let's do it in black actually, let's do it in black. Right, so we've got the gradient. I'll just put grad, okay? So the gradient uh, equals minus 0 point, um, sorry, minus 1.1, and we're gonna divide that by uh, 0 0.1 times by 10 to the minus three. All right, so if you put that into your calculator, you should get a value of minus 11,000. Okay, this is the value for the gradient. So this is minus EA over R, remember, okay? We just wanna work out activation energy. So I'm gonna put EA there. And to work out the activation energy, um, what we need to do is obviously we need to rearrange this equation. So activation energy is going to be R, which is your gas constant, times by um, this value here, okay, which is the answer to your gradient. So um, if we do that, we would then find out what EA is. Because we've got a minus EA, we're actually going to do minus minus on the right hand side, you'll see what I mean. So EA equals minus, and then minus your 11,000, which is the gradient, okay. Uh, and we're going to multiply that by our gas constant, 8.31. Okay, and again, if we put that into our calculator, and we'll get an answer that's quite large because it'll be in joules, it's 91410. Okay, and that's joules per mole. Um, it's probably better to maybe convert that into kilojoules. So if we put it to uh, three significant figures, we can convert it 91.4 kilojoules per mole. Okay, that is our activation energy. So it's relatively straightforward. Obviously, you've got to be able to rearrange your equation. That can be a little bit tricky, but make sure obviously you're doing it in the right way. It's always done in, in that way. There's always R times by the gradient. So it's always that method if that helps. All right, okay, so then what they'll do is they'll then push it a little bit further and then they'll say, right, we have to calculate A. Okay, now the good thing with this actually, because you've calculated the gradient already, so you know a good chunk of, um, of this equation here already. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick two points on our graph. Um, and to make it a little bit easier, um, we're just gonna pick a point that's fairly straightforward. So let's pick this one, okay? So we're gonna say, um, obviously the gradients of this, uh, sorry, the point of this one is going to be uh, 3.1 times by 10 to the minus three. Okay, uh, and that's going to be, let's put a comma there because I'm going to run out of space, uh, against minus four. Okay, so we're going to use that. What that we've done here is effectively we now have a value for one over t, which is our um, uh, x-axis, and then we also have a value for ln k, which is going to be our y-axis. So when we put it into our equation, we now know two values that we can use. Okay, so um, let's write them in. So, we're going to start with uh, ln k. Okay, so we're going to use this expression here. So we said ln k was minus four, because that's the point we picked. You can pick any point there, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put minus four equals, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the values that we used in our gradient before, because we're going to use minus ea over r. So I'm going to put in minus 1.1 divided by 0 0.1 times by 10 to the minus three. This bit here, EA over R, or minus EA over R, is just the number that we used up here. That's what I've done. So I've literally dragged the whole thing across. Okay, uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply that one by one over T, and our one over T value is uh, 3.1 times by 10 to the minus three. So, So this is the value here. So effectively, I've got my e over r minus e over r, which is the gradient bit here. And my one over t is just the same as taking e over r minus e over r times by one over t is the same as this whole thing, 
written up there. So minus EA over RT. So it's exactly the same. So what I've done is I've just put all of their numbers in one place, okay? Uh, right, and then we have to do, obviously we'll work that bit out, put that in brackets, the whole lot, uh, and that's gonna be plus LNA. Obviously we don't know the value of LNA, so we need to put that in, okay? If we put that into our calculator, um, we should get minus four equals, uh, and that should be minus 34.1 uh, plus LNA. So put all the numbers into your calculator, just this bit here, and you should get minus 34.1. Uh, and then if we rearrange that, so bring that across to this side, obviously that turns to a positive. Uh, what we should get is LNA should equal 30. So just running out of space here, I'm gonna put it here. Okay, so what we should have is LNA uh, should equal 30.1. Okay, so um, that's the value of LNA. We need to know what A is. All I've done is rearrange that to get LNA. Okay, uh, what we need to do is obviously rearrange that to, um, to get just A on its own. Now you see here that we've got natural log here. So we have to do the opposite of natural log um, and, and that's just the exponential. I'll show you what that is in the calculator. So if you've got your calculator and you can probably just about see it there, once it comes into focus. So you can see, you can see it on these buttons at the top here and you should be able to see a button which is this button here, if you could see it, there you go. So see it says LN, and you see they've got their E bit with a little box at the top. So in your calculator, let me just switch this thing on. Okay, what you do is you press Shift, and then you press your, this button here. And what you should get is a little E with a little box that's written on there. And in that box, what you do is you put in your 30.1. So if you put on here, so A equals, and it's the E button, which I told you there, and the little box flashes on the top, and you're gonna put 30.1, okay? Then once you've done that, you obviously put all that into your calculator, and it should come out with a value that's quite big, it's quite a large value, so don't be kind of scared of it. 1.18, 1.18 times by 10 to the 13. Okay, and the units are dm cubed per mole per second. And there we have it, um, that's the answer for A. So you've got to make sure that you obviously know the different parts. It can be a bit tricky if you haven't done maths, or if you're not comfortable with maths. I mean, it, it, it helps to try and link it in this expression with the straight line graph, and you can see which bits you've worked out. Really, in a nutshell, you need to know how to work out the gradient because that tells you the activation energy. And if they ask you to work out um, the Arrhenius constant, which is A, then obviously you need to use the gradient amount and you're literally just chucking it into this equation um, with the gradient you've just worked out before, and then you'll be able to find the value of, um, of A, which is your Arrhenius constant. Um, there we go, that's it. Um, if you've got any questions um, regarding this, because I know it can be quite tricky, um, just leave them in the comments box below, uh, and I'll try and, get, try and get round to answering your questions as soon as possible as well. That's it now, bye bye.